um, Blattos? What? W what happened to making science? It, it, it's just that it's been eight months now, and, well, we haven't seen anything. Hey, glad to be back. After traveling to Canada using my portal gun, I have seen the Victoria Royals kick the shit into the Vancouver Giants, and then I went to the Science Museum for the lols. And now I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. In this video, I will be slide tackling Eric and Sai's pre subsidized arguments and their businesses. Sai, moving on to you. Um, people who are not familiar with the argument of pre subsidizationism, can you give a thumbnail sketch of, of the argument that you're advancing? Well, let me uh, first uh, say the other form of argumentation that, that most Christians and most atheists are familiar with would be called the evidential approach, where you actually give evidence to people to prove to them that God exists. And scripture actually says that everybody knows that God exists. So when we give evidence to the unbeliever, we're actually denying what scripture says. And this is the question I ask. I say, where do you hear evidence most often in the secular world? You hear it in court. In the court, you give evidence to the judge and the jury. So when we give evidence to the unbeliever, we're actually saying that they're the judge and the jury and that God's on trial. So I don't do that. Here's a subtle hint of reality for you, bitch cakes. Every concept and every claim is always going to be up for debate. And if you're not willing to show how your God exists with your evidence that you claim to have, then your arguments fall flat and fail miserably. So, so this is this is old school philosophy. This is Munchausen's trilemma. And there the are three, you've got to get off somewhere. And you can start off by being viciously circular. You can start off with an infinite regress, or you can start off with your basal assumptions. I start off with the assumption that the universe exists and that I can learn things about it. And right. things that actually give me a predictive capability are better than those that don't. You said, almost the first thing that you said, I start with the assumption that God exists. Well, Perfect. why start with that? Why not start with the assumption that the universe exists? Because you have experience of that. And because of the, the, the mere fact that you're proposing God as an explanatory agent suggests that you are, well, I know you are, you're operating on, operating on the same um, bios that I am, that your brain is a pattern-finding machine. Now, it's, it's functioning in a defective pattern when you say that um, I, I start with a presupposition of God, because fundamentally what you're doing is you're putting an unknown to explain an, an, another unknown. And that gets that has no predictive capability. That's why Thunderfoot. what you're employing. Go on. Let me ask you one quick question, Thunderfoot. Is it possible that no, your mind? No, no, hang on. No, no. Is it possible that your mind is being controlled? Thunderfoot. Is it possible that you? Is it possible that your mind is being controlled, Thunderfoot? Yes, of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That's concordance and uh, Thunderfoot. Uh, oh, who oh, both oh, say oh, it's oh, possible oh, their mind oh, is oh, being oh, controlled, oh, so they can't oh, know oh, anything oh, to be true. Who else? I see Alex Botton, one of my old uh, old debate uh, opponents, is on now. I'd love to talk the, to Alex. The, the thing is, si, I'm sorry, before we move off this point, the thing is that you, we, we accept, hang on one second, Thunder, one second, Thunder. We accept that, um, or, or Thunder and Concordance have, set, have accepted that point. Right. Um, but when it's thrown back at you, as I say, I, I keep on hearing this rather unsatisfactory argument that, oh, well, we know we're right because of this revelation. Right. Um, I don't understand what form this revelation has taken. Explain. Is it a physical revelation? Is it some something that came to you in your sleep? I mean, uh, how exactly did this revelation come to you? God reveals it in many ways, but one of the ways in which he reveals things such that we can be know, know them to be certain is in his word, in the Bible. Right. Okay. We'll take the next caller. Alex. As you have just heard, he consistently ignored any counterpoints and responds with shy questions that have no relevance to the points made, demonstrating how he is not at all interested in listening to anyone else apart from himself, which would not, no doubt explain his business model. As you can see, the Canadian government does not class size supposed ministry as a charitable organisation, and nor does he want the charity to be registered with the Canadian Revenue Agency, where he would be under the Income Tax Act. This is outlined in the annual form T3010 contract, where he would need to report the donations he receives and returns receipts, so the Canada Revenue Agency can review his work, and as a result of people sending donations, he would have to meet the disbursement quota. 
The disbursement quota is the minimum calculated amount that a registered charity is required to spend each year on its own charitable programs and activities that meets its purpose. This would mean how he would have to spend at least 3.5% of the overall value of his charity's property and shares. Say for instance if the charity's workplace was worth $20,000 and their shares was worth $10,000, they would have to spend 3.5% of $30,000 on resources to fund for activities dedicated to meet the charity's purposes. Every registered charity has to devote its resources to its charitable purposes and activities, even if the amount of their property and shares were worth nothing. Another key important factor is our charity has to maintain its status as a legal entity. As mentioned previously, fundraising and donations are to be directed to the charity's activities and set programs. Charities that engage in unacceptable fundraising cannot be registered under the Income Tax Act because they are not constituted and operated exclusively for charitable purposes and devoting their resources to charitable activities. A registered charity then that engages in unacceptable fundraising is liable to sanctions or the revocation of its registration. But, considering how he has had to remove the donate button because of the rules he would be under, we now see he is only interested in the money going directly to him and not to the charitable purposes of his supposed ministry. I think we can see how his motives revolve around his greed. And if Sai is not greedy, then what services does his ministry provide to the Canadian society? And if he gives reference to himself going to university and standing around like a tramp on the streets preaching, then I think we can see why his ministry wasn't approved as a charity, because people can do that crap for free. Unfortunately, the worst has yet to come. I would now like to report Creation Today's business failures. In their mission statement, they claim to impact individuals to know our Creator, God, and to wholeheartedly experience, defend, and share him through the foundations of scripture. It's a little bit different from when they claim themselves to be the biblical authorities. As a federal 501c3 not-for-profit corporation, they are classed as religious, educational, charitable, scientific, and literary charity. Needless to say, how we have all come across his abundant dog pile of shite from listening to Eric and his team from his blogs and his attempts at debating. We can come to the conclusion how he fails all of the above because their work has only put preyed on the weaknesses of the vulnerable and ignorant. They have not demonstrated any thought or care to opposing views and have only created dysfunctional conflict in communities which has led to the increase of prejudice and discrimination. This itself has, in some cases, escalated into violence. So, in a nutshell, creation today are only helping their narcissistic little egos. The best analogy Eric should know is how he who lives in a glass house shouldn't throw stones. Because when he claimed to be the victim when people were throwing stones back at him, made him look retarded. Much like you did, Eric, making this video, which was the equivalent of you doing this. <coughs> However, what I would like to focus on is the Model Non-Profit Corporation Act. This is a model of legislation prepared by the Non-Profit Organization Committee. They basically act as the authority over Creation Today and review their work. Creation Today must not be organized or operated for the benefit of private interests, and no part of Section 501c3 organization's net earnings may inure to the benefit of any private shareholder or individual. If the organization engages in excess benefit transact, uh, transaction, where the person having substantial influence over the organization, an excise tax may be imposed on the person and any organization managers agree with the transaction. I think this may have happened to Eric, judging by the fact I can't imagine a lot of people investing into creation today, and as a response, he created this video to the IRS. The government MasterCard. We all know you deserve way more than you can afford.
Well, your government MasterCard is loaded up with your grandchildren's money. Under Section 501c3, organizations are absolutely prohibited from supporting political candidates and are subject to li limits on lobbying. They risk loss of tax accept status if violated. He titles the video, Get Your Government MasterCard Today Before It's Too Late. This is a violation of his charity terms of agreement. This acts as a direct message to the government. We can also make links between this video and his father's statements against the IRS. Statement that says, when I mention how evolution ties in with communism and Karl Marx was anti-God in everything he did and he invented the graduated income tax system that we have here. Right. And all I say is, by the way, Karl Marx invented the income tax and it's voluntary. And I go right on with my seminar. That one little eight second statement has brought me who knows how many thousands of phone calls. So we've got a letter explaining, you know, why I say that. And that's what I want to have this video for. If somebody wants more information, um, you know, maybe this will help explain. It is voluntary. If un unless you're still down here. That's right. If you haven't redeemed your straw man, well, then you, you better do what they say. Right. That's it. And, and it's amazing if, if people would just read his, the, his 10 planks of communism. Right. Folks, we have a communistic we're, we're, communist, we we're communistic, right? In summary, I think we can conclude how Eric and Sai are on their last legs. I would encourage you all to report this to the IRS to make sure Creation Today is finally shut down, so we can see an end to his stupidity and end his influence on vulnerable individuals. I ask this because I have a strong passion for charities, in particular for the ones I have been working with here in Canada. I would like to see the garbage like Creation Today gone because they act as a negative representation of charities and act as a waste of resources. To finish off, I would like to read you a quote from Paulo Freire. True generosity consists precisely in fighting to destroy the causes which nourish false charity. False charity constrains the feeble and subdues the rejects of life to extend their trembling hands. Real generosity lies in striving so those hands, whether of individuals or entire groups, need be extended less and less in supplication, so that more and more they become human hands, which work and by working transform the world.